Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordo. We are the founders of Lumia. And we're super passionate about all things coaching, and we want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training thousands of life coaches. Let's dive into the science and magic of coaching. On today's episode, Noelle and I are going to tell you how to get your employer to pay for your coach training. Noelle, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, and this is, a, uh, is going to be a valuable episode for so many. I didn't, I, even th- I didn't even think about this. I didn't think about getting your employer to pay for your coach training, but of course it makes sense. Absolutely. That's one of the benefits, obviously, that we we offer at Lumia, that anybody who works for our organization gets to go through the program. And I have to say that even folks who don't end up going on to launch their own coaching practices benefit so oh, yeah. oh, much yeah. from the training. Um, it is a huge life asset. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, I don't even see it as coach training. I see it as a, a, a self-betterment training. And then um, coaching is kind of the the ripple that could happen afterwards. Absolutely. And within an organizational context, one of the ways that folks can think about coach training is it will take your existing skill set and give you interpersonal superpowers. So is that the angle? Is that what you tell your boss is uh, you're, you're going by, by paying for this, uh, you're going to amplify my superpowers? I mean, I think that's a great way to approach any conversation with a boss, <laughs> you know, but right. I, I, it's it's nuanced. So let's let's drill down on it because right now we're in this really interesting and exciting time in coaching where employers are beginning to figure out how to layer coaching skills and coaching methodology into the employee engagement experience. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the important thing to know here is that the infrastructure of that industry hasn't been built yet. And so anybody who's coming in now, anyone who has an ICF accredited coaching certification now can be one of the people at their own organization to shape the way that coaching unfolds. Yeah. I mean, we were just talking about in a few episodes ago, uh, you know, Meta and, you know, hiring coaches and how they're such a huge company that how that's going to open the floodgates, you know, for many other companies to do the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coaching sits at the intersection of learning and development at HR. And then it also sits within individual teams where managers get much better at relating to their employees. Or if an entire team is trained in coaching methodology, the entire team gets really good at holding responsibility for Mm -hmm. clear communication and collective well-being. Yeah. We actually have uh, steps for you today. We do. We do. And if you want to read this, if you want to hold this in your hands, you can also find it on our Lumia blog. So that's a a great way to, to take this information and actually turn it into a workbook. Nice. Step one is find your why. Yes. And this is personal. Because when you when you take on coach training, um, it is wonderful. It is a, a journey of self knowing and self exploration, and it's also a year's worth of of work of graduate level work. And so it's important to you know square with yourself and ask the hard questions like, how is this going to make me better in mm-hmm. my job? Right. What are the specific areas through which I will perform my work better? How can I bring more value to my organization with a coaching certification? So let's tackle these. What has been your direct experience, John? I mean, you're surrounded by coaches. How does this enhance your life in terms of working with people? Oh, I mean, just... uh... From a human exchange perspective, uh, communication, uh, them being happier, them having more tools, them maneuvering through life better, uh, boundaries, 
right? <laughs> no yes. one teaches us boundaries in, in high school, uh, self-care. So all of that, I think, makes them, uh, the word I use is potent a lot, but it raises their potential. It, it, it's it's such a great investment, I think, for, for a company or not even a company, like even for like me, if I was to uh, pay for my assistant uh, to go through, you know, any kind of coach training, I know at the end, she's She's just going to be better all around. And also, uh, if you care about your employee, uh, most likely happier too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can think of some really specific areas as well. So um, as an organizational lead, what coach training has done for me is really helped me um, to be a more effective communicator. And Mm -hmm. I can tell you specifically how it comes down to active listening and mirroring. So when I'm in meetings with our team members, something that I do just naturally, because it has been drilled into me through coach training is to say, this is what I think I heard. Let me mirror it back to you so that you can tell me if I got it right. And that really simple act makes the person that I'm talking to feel seen and heard. And it really cuts down on miscommunications because I make sure that I got it right. And nobody walks away feeling, geez, my boss just doesn't understand anything I'm trying to say. Yeah. It actually um, naturally will put out a lot of fires with employees. So so the CEO doesn't have to get involved. If you, if you have the tools to communicate, set boundaries and, and discuss stuff, you know? Absolutely. And another way where it's made me instantly more effective. And I don't think it has anything to do with my, my role. I think this cuts across, um, you know, all different parts of working in an organization is planning that when someone comes to you and there's this big, huge project looming on the horizon, it can feel overwhelming to think in terms of the outcome set. But because of coach training, I learned how to break really big goals down into very specific action steps. And it has given me so much comfort to know that whatever is in front of me, when I break it down into really small chunks, it gives me the time and space that I need to think through how I'm going to attack my problem or, or my goal. Yeah. It's like uh, teaching someone a new way of thinking. Yes. Yeah, which is huge. So it's not yes. just about uh, when people think of coach training, they think of uh, how I'm going to help other people. And sure, of course, obviously, but uh, teaching yourself how to think different. So that's mm-hmm. that's huge. That's a game changer. It's huge. Step number two, take a look at your work performance. This is important. And, and this is, I mean, this is common sense. Right. If you've been doing a terrible job at work, Hey, that might be an argument for someone for to pay for you to get coach training, but it, mm-hmm. it likely won't help your case. So when you're taking a look at your performance, the direct link that you want to draw for your employer is the why behind why it's a good idea to invest further in you. Maybe mm-hmm. your performance does need a boost. Maybe you have skills or you've been recognized in certain areas that you think you could really develop in and even go further. And then really specifically, it's making a, a note and being able to show all of the different times that you've learned something new and made your company or your team or your performance better. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I think every boss uh, would find that very valuable. I think it's a compelling argument. You know, if, if someone came to me and said, Hey, listen, every time I read this book or took this training or tried this new thing, it, it benefited you. I'd be like, Oh, tell me more. What else can you learn? (laughs) Right. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Step number three is, uh, focus on the organization. Yes. So every company sets aside uh, typically, you know, X dollars every year for learning and development for their their teams. That happens generally company wide. It's generally HR or learning and development who decides what kind of programming is going to be brought in. Um, companies tend to outsource both coaching and coach training to 
institutions outside of their in-house learning and development. Mm -hmm. And so when we're, we're looking at the organization, it's important to understand what your company's relationship is with the idea of coaching. Does your does your company call itself um, a learning institution? Is learning valued? Is coaching valued? Are these key words that you've heard before from within your organization? Is this part of your organizational value? If it is, that's great. You have language. You know how to communicate with the decision makers who are in your sphere. If it's not, you're going to need to engage in a little bit of education so that folks really clearly understand the outcome of coach training and the transferable skills. So what we're looking at literally is communication, leadership, as I mentioned, goal setting, motivating people, performance coaching, bringing in higher levels of emotional intelligence. And this is especially important if you're going to become a manager, if you are a manager, looking at self-awareness, and then, of course, gaining a really strong handle on ethics. These are all traits that leaders want to see within their employees. And so if you're bringing these things to the fore and saying, hey, I want to get better at this skill set, that's impressive. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you ask your boss if uh, the company can pay for uh, your training, it's easy to think that you're asking for, you know, a gift or that this is something that uh, um, is only going to benefit you. But the step three, when you go to your boss and you're now focusing on the organization and how this training can help us or the company, um, this is this is what's, gonna, I think, going to make the, the boss see it differently. Yes, I completely agree. And, you know, to your point um, of how somebody might feel going into this conversation um, with an employer, it's really important for you as as the person who's going to go through coach training to do your own due diligence and to um, get in touch with the skills that are going to come from coach training, communication, goal setting, motivating, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, and ethics. And think about those things in terms of who you are and and get in touch with them so that you can authentically talk about why they're important to you. And it will turn your dial from, oh, this is something that someone is doing for me or gifting to me to this, this is vital for yeah. my life. Yeah. And coming at it with that level of authenticity and passion makes a, a massive difference. Hey, uh, proof that I was born in the 70s using words like boss (laughs) instead of CEO or leader. Uh, Uh, Man, okay. Uh, Step number four is to be prepared. Yeah, to be prepared for the conversation. So, Mm -hmm. you know, just like anything, you know, every, every organization has a different culture around how information is shared and received. Some organizations are really informal where you can text or Slack um, anyone in the company with a kind of just a conversational ping. Other organizations are a little bit more structured. And when you're putting forth a piece of communication that you'd like to be considered, it might need to be put into a formal deck or a formal proposal. And so Mm -hmm. if you're thinking about that, All of the different pieces that we discussed already are going to go into the deck or the proposal. So just just to review, let's thinking about you know what's what's going to go in your proposal. How is this going to make me better as a human? How is this going to make make me better as an employee? How do the skill sets and outcomes of coaching relate to your own? company values. So this is a checklist that you want to be working through and you want to be able to to verbally um, you know, hit these points. So you might need to do a little bit of practicing with people at home and then really queuing up the value and coaching, the value that coaching can bring to the business. And that will be kind of the the lead in to having that conversation. So you want to be able to verbally work through 
all of those things. Um, John, you've done a lot of on-screen stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare when you know you have to verbally deliver something? I would say, uh, first, I think it depends on your style. So my style is more uh, in the moment, more trusting, um, you know, the conversation where it's going to go. But I do have to have an outline. So I'm not just going into uh, rooms, you know, talking about my day. I, I have to leave with points uh, across and I have to leave uh, giving some kind of value. And I think if you just go in thinking you're going to have a casual conversation uh, with your uh, CEO, it could go sideways or it could even never be brought up. Right. So going in with um, these are the points that I need to get across. And I was also going to say, uh, I didn't even think about this to walk in with a deck is so impressive. And, and even if, even if your leader doesn't look at the deck, just the fact that you made a deck shows that you put so much effort into the ask. So it's not just like, Hey, can, can you do this for me? It's like, let me um, show you how much work I've done just, just to have this meeting with you and, and offer this. I mean, I, I think that that's pretty amazing. Bringing a I, deck. Yeah. I agree. I, I completely agree. Whenever any of our team members takes to t the time to do that for a new idea, I know that there's thought behind it and that there's intention behind it. So you're, you're, you're super right. That's a fantastic point that the presentation itself um, is, a, is a benefit added to your it, ask. It's harder to say no if someone comes with a deck and prepared uh, instead of in passing in the elevator. Hey, I had an idea. Would can the company pay for my coach training? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, seriously. Yeah. And you know, to that point as well, you know, you have your deck that you're you're going to be presenting from and then you're also going to want to have maybe a piece of paper with an outline that's just for you of the key points that you want to hit because as John was talking about what it's like to do this kind of on-screen work, it is appropriate and professional to be prepared with an outline. Um, it is not normal for anyone to think that they have to remember something important off the top of their head. So whatever you need to do to be prepared, you know, take those steps. And then the tricky part, and I think where people start to feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable is when we get down to the nuts and bolts, because how coach training will benefit you, how coach training will benefit your organization. That's all the, the glorious stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we get down to dun, 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 how does, how much does, how much, how much does right. the training cost? Does, Cause this is the, gonna... this is the question that the mom and dad asks when you ask for something. Okay. Just tell me how much it costs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. That's going to be the first question on anyone's mind. So how much does the training cost? And if you really want to go the extra mile, you might want to prepare how much does the training cost and what's the anticipated ROI that would immediately offset the cost. So let me give you an example. If you are um, a manager and you know that in the next year, you are going to have new hires coming in underneath you. That is a fantastic reason to engage in coach training because new hire retention is one of the best things that you can do to save your organization money. So if you're going mm. to your boss and saying, Hey, I know I'm going to have three new people coming in under me. This is how much it costs our organization to hire these people. This is how much it will cost our organization if we lost these people. If mm -hmm. you give me this skill set where I can directly impact the employee engagement of these new hires, I'm going to be saving your company money on the back end because we're not going to lose these people because I'm going to have the skills to manage them and communicate with them effectively, hold boundaries and empathy. Boom, right. boom, boom. Great argument. Yeah. So when you, when you're talking about cost, uh, instead of just focusing on the actual cost of the training, focusing on, you know, the, the, the cost, if, um, I don't do this, the cost of, um, the company and what the company uh, can lose. Yes. 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 Yep. And then beyond that, the time commitment. So, you know, any employer is going to be wondering, well, is this going to take away from 
your time at work and the time that you're thinking about your job. So that is another important variable that you're going to have to consider and be able to talk about. And here's another place where I would draw the link between, yes, I'm going to be doing this for two hours a week and that two hours a week over the course of a year will allow me to immediately apply what I'm learning. So while there is a two hour a week commitment, which is, oh, by the way, what, what our Lumia time commitment is, um, two hours a week will net you immediate returns in terms of my enhanced skill set. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Man, we're really um, making it hard for, <laughs> for the CEO to say no. I agree. If you follow this plan. yeah. If you follow this plan. And then, you know, of course, will productivity be impacted, right? That's Mm -hmm. a great question. Um, And I would posit, knowing what I know about coach training, is that it actually might increase my productivity because right out of the gate, I'm going to be learned. I'm going to learn how to effectively set goals and strategize. And so one of the first things I'll learn in coach training will impact my own project management, my own time management, my own organization. Yeah. And you know, the last piece uh, isn't really a step, but it's, it, I think it's just as important. It's um, getting yourself excited to bring back the knowledge, your experience, what you've learned, but most importantly, who you've become through the coach training to empower your organization. Yes. Yes. That's huge. And I think that this ties into positioning coach training as a competitive advantage. Most leaders, unless they have been legitimately hiding under a rock for the last couple of years, have heard the word coaching. They know that coaching is in some way, shape, or form magic beans for their organization. A lot of folks are fuzzy on exactly what coaching is and how it will benefit me. But if you can shed light on that, the other piece that you're bringing to the table is, and when all of this comes to fruition, it's going to give me and our organization a competitive advantage because I'm going to bring all of this great stuff back. Take a look look at the blog or uh, listen to this again, write down the notes. And if you're interested in coach training, and also having your company, your quote unquote boss, your CEO uh, to pay for this uh, because it's going to be great for them, uh, not just you, then follow these steps and you will have a great chance at, at that happening. Absolutely. And if you would like to talk to any of our admissions coaches at Lumia, they can help you with this process. And If you'd like to talk to me about bringing coach training into your company, Mm -hmm. I'm happy to have that conversation as well, um, one-on-one. So as you're thinking about this, you know, one of the great things that that I like to look at is, is the real world tangible impacts that we've seen from our students. And so many folks are bringing coaching into their organizations in incredibly cool ways, and they're gaining confidence in Mm -hmm. being able to show up effectively. So this is business leaders, advisors, HR professionals, DEI folks, personal trainers, software developers, nurses, teachers, social workers, project managers. Um, All of these folks have used coaching to build out their divisions. Yeah, love it. Thank you for listening. Be well. Thanks for listening to Everything Life Coaching. If you're feeling the draw to become a coach, head to lumiacoaching.com slash everything. Explore a new career that brings fulfillment, gives you a true sense of purpose, and a bold community to do it with. Lumia is ready to equip you with the tools, training, and community you will need to reach your goals. If you're ready to build a unique coaching business on your own terms while making an impact on the world at large, Lumia is the next bold step in your coaching journey. That's lumiacoaching.com slash everything. And hey, if you're waiting for a sign, this is it.